So glad you're streaming with us. Well, more on that historic indictment of former President Donald Trump today. He pled not guilty to 34 felony counts for falsifying business records. So let's discuss this with ABC News De Deputy Political Director Avery Harper, along with ABC News contributors and former DOJ official under the Trump administration, Sarah Isker, and former Democratic Senator from North Dakota, Heidi Heitkamp. Uh, Avery, let me just uh, begin with you. You know, we, we've looked at this case now for hours top to bottom. What do you see from your deputy political director uh, 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 point of view about this case? What's the, what's the takeaway for you? Right, well, uh, my takeaway is that the focus of the Republican Party has uh, been entirely on former President Trump uh, and his own personal grievances. Uh, and as long as that focus remains on Trump, they are not talking about uh, the Biden administration. They're not talking about President Biden. They are not uh, talking about their agenda. They are not talking about 2024, which uh, is really a risk for uh, Republicans heading into these critical uh, elections. You know, when you look at our latest ABC News Ipsos poll, uh, you really see that there is a significant chunk of voters, uh, particularly Republicans and independents who are uh, looking at these developments closely. There is about one in five who say of Republicans who say uh, that they are uh, don't know whether or not Trump should have been charged. If you look at independents, about 27 percent of, of those folks say they don't know if uh, president, former President Trump should have been charged. And that could result at the end of the day in folks shopping elsewhere when it comes to their primary votes in 2024. Sarah, you think that's going to happen? I mean, every time something has gone down uh, surrounding the former president, he takes advantage of the moment. He seizes the moment. He holds a he holds a rally. He he, he calls for his people to gather, and that's what he's going to do tonight in Mar-a-Lago. I think that's exactly right. And Avery makes a great point about Republicans losing focus on Joe Biden on 2024. It feels a lot like 2015 again to me. Uh, I was running Carly Fiorina's campaign at the time, and it didn't matter what you did or what you wanted to talk about. The focus was on Donald Trump. And in some respects, we'd really moved away from that. It's why you saw Ron DeSantis moving up in the polls quite quickly against Donald Trump. But once again, here we are, all focus is on Donald Trump. Cable news back to back was showing the plane last night as it flew to Manhattan. Uh, and in the meantime, Donald Trump's incredibly lucky because this indictment uh, compared to his other criminal problems, potentially, I'm looking here at Fulton County or even at the Department of Justice, this is by far the weakest legal case against him. And it gives Republicans a chance to paint this as a political indictment. So you feel it's it's politically motivated because we're, we've been hearing both sides, right? Is it politically motivated or is this about financial and election integrity, which is what Alvin Bragg has been saying? What what is what is your sense? Uh, I don't want to look into someone's heart, and decide whether it's politically motivated, but it was an incredibly sloppy statement of facts, the sloppiest I've seen of any major case coming out of a district attorney or Department of Justice. Um, it doesn't tie together what they're actually charging. We were left with a lot of questions. What is the underlying crime that they need to reach that felony? Is it a state election charge? In which case it can't be about uh, campaign finance. In fact, the state election statute that Alvin Bragg mentioned in his press conference, but not in the statement of facts, mm. says that there has to be some other unlawful activity. So now we need a third crime. Uh, really odd. And you're seeing lawyers from across the political spectrum sort of scratching their heads right now going, really? Uh, ugh, you indicted Donald Trump with this? Uh, people are a little bit confused. And that was... Uh, his moment, Alvin Bragg's moment, to be as clear, as forceful, and as damning as possible for the court of public opinion as to why these charges are justified and why Donald Trump should be convicted. And Heidi, I, I do want to ask you, as, uh, as a former uh, United States senator, as someone who I always thought of as an institutionalist, what your take is on a local prosecutor, whatever the merits of the Manhattan case, does this open the door? We called this unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Is there now a new precedent that frankly, every Tom, Dick, and Harry prosecutor around the country that resents the former former president or former officeholders, yep. it's open season. 
Well, let's let's remember that a grand jury actually indicted. They presented facts to 12 independent uh, individuals, and they came back and said yes, they had uh, probable cause to believe that a crime had been committed, and and the indictment was issued, and the arraignment was done today. I think we 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 need to not be so quick to um, kind of condemn the district attorney. He's got his day in court. Donald Trump will have his day in court. But you know what is clear? Is Donald Trump falsified business records, right? And whether that was serious enough for the uh, Manhattan uh, DA to actually take a case, that's for the Manhattan DA to, to respond to. But I will tell you this, when we're talking about political ramifications, I think that the underlying fact Facts, that this whole thing stemmed from Trump trying to cover up allegedly illicit affairs and maybe even now as we we hear uh, an uh, illegitimate child those are the things voters are going to listen to and as Trump is trying to defend this if this were a tax case if this were a matter of you know bypassing a regulation it wouldn't have the cachet and I think that uh, independent women and suburban women that gave him that vote in 2016 walked away in 20 they're in play this time because of inflation um, are they going to be turned off by all of this and the underlying mm -hmm. facts of this case not just the legal facts but the ick of of what is going to come out as a result of this so alvin bragg said it's falsifying business records to bury negative press which violates state and federal election laws does this rise to the standard of indicting a former president. Heidi? Well, does it, does it rise to the standard of indicting anyone? I mean, because he's a former president, go. we should not be looking through that lens. We should say, if somebody else did this behavior, would they be subject to indictment? You know what? As a former elected official, I'm not worried about indictment because I'm pretty sure I didn't ever commit a crime like this. <laughs> and so, you know, let's, let's just be honest about what we're dealing with here. We're all treating him in some special way. And I don't think that's right. Fair enough. Good point. <laughs> so Avery, uh, just uh, let, let me just quickly ask you, the, the, this is the first time we've seen this happen to a presidential candidate, mm -hmm. and Heidi raises this, uh, the, the specter that, that it will turn off uh, certain uh, elements of the Republican base. And I just wonder if there's going to be a candidate on that debate stage who's going to turn to him and say, thank you, Mr. President, for your service. But, you know, I don't know about any porn stars, and we don't need this whole thing that you've gotten yourself into in our race. Do you expect someone to take them on like that? Right. Uh, by and large, most of the uh, current Republican candidates for president uh, have stood by uh, former President Trump, with the exception of uh, former Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson. He is the only one who has said that uh, since Trump has gotten indicted, that he should bow out of this race. Now, I will be interested to see, uh, should there be more indictments, should there be more charges in some of these other probes, if there will be more uh, Republican candidates and, and potential candidates that are willing to come forward and willing to argue more freely that a Republican should look in another direction for leadership. All right, Avery. Sarah and Heidi, thanks very much. That was fun. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.